explanation. Now, I do believe, tell me the truth. Is it uh, true that your dad has a ringside seat, but didn't get you guys ringside seats? That is true, but it's because of his YouTube channel, okay? It's his YouTube, okay? Her dad's an influencer. Let him go, guys. <laughs> but your dad's awesome, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, check this out. I am officially now sponsored by Dubby. Dubby is a clean energy drink made to give you focus with no crash. If you guys are like me, you're always needing a burst of energy, especially with one with no crash. Dubby contains vitamins, amino acids, a nootropic, and 150 milligrams of caffeine. It keeps me awake with no jitters, guys. Check it out. Merch link is in the bio. Dubby. up everybody welcome to the pre-party a presentation of alliance-wrestling.com your number one source for news and information for the national wrestling alliance my name is j cal and it is the, the fourth of july it is the independence day here in the united states we celebrate our freedoms on this day by usually blowing fingers off of our hands with firecrackers i know you think it's a joke but there are many millions of people who are waking up this morning with 10 fingers that'll go to bed with less than 10. That's all I'm saying. I see I have a lot of friends in the chat. So what is up? I see Willie is here. Mike, we're going to start calling you Miracle Mike. Mike is back. Love you, brother. Glad you are doing better. Uh, stay tuned to Mike's Twitter for more information on that. Uh, Jeremy Wrestling with the MMA is here. What is up? Going? What's going on? Uh, Sam's at work, but he, uh, he dropped in to say what's up. So what's up, Sam? How you doing, brother? Uh, <laughs> Mike said, I already almost had something explode on me. No fireworks today. I don't blame you, sir. Uh, happy that you're home. First and foremost, uh, it is a USA Tuesday, not a power. No, 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 sir. Bob, we don't have a power tonight, but what we do have is a, a certain set of tools that are, <laughs> that are used to um i don't know do something in junk so my original plan was to start tonight's show off with some videos that i took from last night's and excuse me united wrestling network i was so impressed with the roster and the uh the growth of some of the guys that are there uh not just in terms of wrestling ability but um market ability some of these guys who I don't want to say that they were small, but you've seen I could see an improvement both in physique and in ring and a lot of uh, a lot of that other uh je ne sais quoi, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the mystery meat, uh the sauces of the boss, you know. Um, a lot of the talent has a much more professional look, and I think this is great. Um, if you guys have not heard or not paying attention, uh, there's been a lot of teasing. Uh, by uh, uh, Dave Marquez and the United Wrestling Network. Something big is around the corner. Now, what that is, I, I don't know, guys. I mean, I have ideas and I have talked to people, but I'm not at liberty to say what's going to happen or what's going on. Hey, that's a new face in here tonight. Hassan Terrell. Welcome to the show. I, I Any relations to Taryn? Big fan of Taryn Terrell here at the Alliance blog. Uh, but 
needless to say, um, I really liked the direction of the United Wrestling Network is going. Let's move cable so that they're not in the way of the camera, huh? <laughs> Come on now. There we go. That didn't work. Stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm very impressed with what's happening for the for the United Wrestling Network. I'm very happy with the direction that Championship Wrestling has taken. I'll be honest, I haven't I haven't been up to speed with what's happening in Derby City. But man, uh, some of their talents actually visited last night, and I'm talking. I think it's okay for me to say these names. I, I don't think these are very big spoilers. But Marty Bell was not in action last night, but was doing guest commentary. Uh, I think that might be building towards a women's uh, match for the United Wrestling Network. We also saw um, uh, uh, um, uh, Aaron Williams. That's sorry, I was just looking up my notes. Aaron Williams from uh, uh, Derby City also made his first appearance at the uh, Championship Wrestling uh, television taping last night. We also saw. Uh, uh, Oh God! What's his name? Bellagio, uh, Rocco Bellagio, uh, make his debut in Hollywood, and in each role was very prominent for the Derby City wrestlers, and it added a new element to the rosters. It, it, these guys don't come in here as your typical in Southern California. It's a product of the environment. Uh, a lot of the pro wrestlers don't qualify for that heavyweight status. We love Danny Limelight here on this show. Danny Limelight, uh, welcome on here anytime. But Danny Limelight's genuinely a junior heavyweight. He's not a genuine heavyweight, right? I mean, no, that's not that's not incendiary. That's not offensive. It's the truth. If you look at the championship wrestling from Hollywood roster, when you already had guys like Jude Diz, who is built, you got Jordan Clearwater, who is built, you got Sledge, who's a big boy, uh, you got Papo Esco, who qualifies for that heavyweight status. Uh, you know, there's a lot of big guys on there. So adding these additional pieces really makes it feel like a bigger deal. So I, I don't know. I, I'm very excited to where they're heading. Um, like I said, I was going to play some clips, but I can't seemingly get the ones I wanted to up. So I'll show you what I've got. And we'll start off with this one. <laughs> That's Slice Boogie. You remember him from the United Wrestling Network as a, a one half of the uh, tag team champions with Papo Esco, but he was also a part of the National Wrestling Alliance. I hope you guys remember that. Two more clips, and then we'll we'll get to. <laughs> heat that Jordan Clearwater got last night was pretty incredible. Like I know, I know he's a qualified heel. Like he doesn't, I almost feel like the NWA just misuses him. And maybe they, maybe that's true. Uh, wrestling with the MMA says I've noticed since Danny has held the title, the commentaries refrain from calling it a heavyweight title. Actually, Jeremy, what you're discovering is it's never been called a true heavyweight championship. It was always referred to as the world title. Never had a weight clash distinction because I believe the idea was that it was going to always be an open weight championship going back to when Chris Dickinson was wrestling for it. You remember that tournament also featured the likes of, uh, of uh, uh, Kevin Martinson was in that tournament. Uh, Davey boy Smith, junior Harry Smith was supposed to be part of it, but uh 
uh, due to COVID restrictions and stuff, wasn't able to get cleared for that. Uh, also, Eric, the red beard, formerly of the WWE was a part of that tournament. Um, and then of course, uh, uh, Mike, uh, my, oh gosh, well, wow, now I'm, now I'm losing my mind here. Mike, um, part of the kingdom. Why can't I think of his name? Mike, he's a great dude. Uh, Lamb said they all said heavyweight title, but yeah, it's an open weight title with the distinction. And I can't, I can't reference every time the title has been defended, but I know that Dave Marquez insisted it not being called a heavyweight championship, knowing that it would never be like his roster didn't have a lot of heavyweights on it. And it's kind of misleading to the audience where if you call it just the world championship without the distinction of a weight class, I mean, then it's not a problem being on a guy like Danny Limelight or a guy like Eddie Kingston or a guy like, uh, Mike Bennett. Gosh, thanks, guys. I can't believe I couldn't think of his name. I wanted to say Mike Barrett, and I knew that wasn't right. Uh, but anyway, anyway, I thought it was a great uh, a great effort last night. Um, make sure you stay tuned to your local uh, YouTube channel. I believe it's on the Memphis Wrestling, where they will continue to uh, put that product out. If you live in the local market, you can watch Derby City and its local market. Championship Wrestling, I believe, is on some satellites. And, of course, Memphis Wrestling. Uh, airs in Memphis, but all three of those programs air on the uh, Memphis YouTube channel. And now I'm going to get a drink of Debbie. So it being the 4th of July, who is the most patriotic wrestler in your opinion? Is it Lex Luger after he body slammed Yokozuna? Is it the Patriot Del Wilkes? Is it the Stinger when he used to wear the red and white, uh, red, white, and blue face paint? Was it Macho Man Randy Savage when he used to wear the red, white, and blue uh, jacket. Was it Sergeant Slaughter? Was it the real American hero, Hulk Hogan? Who are your thoughts as the most patriotic wrestler in sports entertainment, pro wrestling? Uh, I missed some of your comments, so I'm going back to look at them. Uh, Hassan, thank you for the uh, happy greeting for 4th of July. I hope you are having a good one as well. Uh, Mike says, let me guess, UWN is going to try and work things out with the NWA. Mike. I think there's a better chance of the uh, XFL merging with the NFL at this point. I don't think there's ever going to be an opportunity for the NWA and the United Wrestling Network to work again. Although, I mean, look, stranger things have happened, uh, but I'm not holding my breath for that. I, I actually saw some cool text messages last night. I Gosh, I can't. I can't say anything, guys. I took a vow of uh, silence on this one. But uh, if things happen the way that they are expected to, that they're hoping to, you're all going to be very happy with that. If you're a fan of the United Wrestling Network, you're going to be very happy with that. Um, Slice Boogie is one and a half of limelight. Slice Boogie is a has had a transformation. That guy is working his ass off. If you saw him when he was in the NWA... He was always a big guy. Uh, I mean, he kind of fit that profile that the NWA was looking for, like genuine heavyweights. But the mass that he's put on, and then and then he's cut. It's not just, uh, and I hope I, I I don't insult the man, but he went from you know being a big guy to being a big buff guy. If that makes sense, um, he looks great. Um, let's see. I pray that the United Wrestling Network and the NWA can work things out. Maybe a joint crossover promotional matches and pay per view events. And Willie, I, I, like I said, I just, look, money cures a lot of things. Money would cure a lot of things. I just don't see it happening. Um, Willie says the might, the mighty zaddies versus uh lot of Bellion. You know, that match is more or less already happened. The wolf zaddies have wrestled La Rebellion, just not for the titles. It's happened actually several times out here in Southern California. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I'm watching last night's United Wrestling Network, and I'm going, man, if I'm Billy Corgan, I'm offering that dude a contract. I'm offering that dude a contract. I'm bringing in that tag team. I'm bringing in that tag team. I mean, it's stupid how much how much uh, a wealth of talent is in championship wrestling. Uh, and I don't feel like they even get their just desserts. So there's a being in Southern California, it's so diverse that I have all different kinds of wrestling. But I see guys all the time who I think, man, that dude would be great on television and he's not, and they're not. And it's surprising. Um, 
maybe I should write an article about that. Uh, so yeah, just more of your comments. Uh, Mike says, Sergeant Slaughter to the AWA version. Uh, well, unless you go Hogan, WWF with the Eye of the Tiger. The Iron Sheik was by far. That, okay, that's a fair point. Jeremy brings up a very good point because there was nobody more patriotic than the Iron Sheik. Unfortunately, Sheiky Baby wasn't an American patriot. Uh, I mean, and it's funny. I'm talking about American patriotism. And I've got the British Commonwealth Championship on display here. I don't, you know, and, and the shame, the shame of it is all, the shame of it is it all. So I don't even have the most patriotic luchador ever on screen here. And that would be Mr. La Legend El Americana. That'd be dope if Marvel did license these out to like the WWE. I know it's supposed to be a triple A, but like, well, in the United States, we don't get a lot of triple A. Uh, Steve's in the house. Uh, media says, okay, UWN gets a national TV deal. I mean, look, man, anything can happen. There's a writer strike going on right now. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but a lot of your entertainment that you've been watching is starting to run out. Uh, networks need content and who knows what could happen. Maybe it is, maybe, the, maybe both, maybe the NWA and the United wrestling network get on TV, you know, who knows? Uh, but this is a very weird in time and space that we are in currently. And nothing would shock me except for the fact if Billy and Marquez work together again. That would surprise me. Willie Bowen says the Patriot, the Rock and Roll Express are patriotic. What about the uh, Cam Am connection? Rick Martell and Tom Zink, do they get any points? Wait a minute. What about Barry Windham and Mike Rotundo? The U.S. Express. Where don't they get any favoritism in this? Or the Patriots? Uh, oh gosh, I don't even know uh, what was his name. Uh, Chris Champion and Chip something or other. I saw it earlier. Maybe I still have it on my screen. Oh, see, Lamb. Lamb is asking the real questions right now. If you could trade one United talent to the NWA and vice versa, who would it be and why? Whew. Oh, sorry. I got to go back to this one. What about Hacksaw Jim Duggan? Yeah, that's yes. Uh, but but back to Lamb's take, man. That's our question. That's a great question. Um, for the United Wrestling Network, I'm going to go drafting from the NWA, and I'm going to pick somebody who isn't currently involved in a NWA, uh, who, who's wrestled for the U UWN on a somewhat regular basis. I will say... Dak Draper would be the guy that I would pick. And I know like a lot of you are like, well, not the throw Billy. And I, and no, I don't think the throw Billy quite fits the United wrestling network formula. I think, I think he would be amazing for the NWA. I think he will be amazing. I think Dak Draper would be a really good fit for you, the United wrestling network, especially if we're talking about a pursuit of that uh, world championship. Now to flip the script a little bit, who would I take from the United Wrestling Network into the NWA? I mean, look, um, Jordan Cruz is right there, would be a very dominant uh, junior heavyweight to add. Danny Limelight would also be a very dominant junior heavyweight to add. Uh, but I think who I, I think could be the most versatile, maybe a guy like Ju Diz. I don't see Ju Diz getting the, the type of uh, the type of run he should be getting in the United Wrestling Network, and I, you know, I'm not saying that uh, he necessarily fits a certain model or motif, but he's got a great shape, great size, you know, good look. I think he would blend well with the uh, current uh, NWA roster. I mean, uh, last night seeing him in the ring next to um, Jordan Clearwater. I mean, Clearwater's a big guy, but Judas isn't much smaller than him. And uh, I think he would fit very well in that mid to uh, to upper mid card area for the NWA. Uh, maybe somebody to balance out the roster a bit. Um, let's see. Let's get to some more of the comments. <laughs> the love for Hacksaw Jim Duggan. It's real. Uh, Willie Bowen says, former NWA women's champion Misty Blue Sims was very patriotic. She was always in the red, white, and blue. Uh, Mike says, I'd say 24-7 Duggan was p patriotic every match. 
until he turned his back and joined Team Canada. Or did you forget about that, Mike? Or were you just not watching WCW when it got bad? Um, Jeremy says, to answer Lamb's question, I'd trade the United Wrestling Network Clearwater to the NWA so that people get a chance to see more of his character work and NWA Clearwater. T- <laughs> That's great, Jeremy. It is almost like two different people, and, and it sucks for Clearwater. I don't think it's his fault. You know, I don't blame him at all, but like, man, the kind of talent that this guy has, and, and, and he, I, I get it. I know that the NWA, excuse me, the United Wrestling Network officials are a little bit biased, but uh, I was talking to one of the uh, uh, producers of the show. As Limelight is just catching so much heel heat. And it was at the expense of Zicky Dice. I hope it translates onto TV. I hope you guys get to see it. Uh, but there was so much animosity for Jordan Clearwater that, uh, I don't know, man. I, I really hope that the, uh, I hope it translates on TV. That, you know, in a in a crowd that normally is booing Zicky Dice, they were booing Jordan Clearwater. It was, it was good to see. Um, Clearwater, I think, could definitely take that next step in the in the NWA. I just feel like he needs that opportunity. And the problem is, again, you know, you look at the NWA, there's a lot of great talent on top. And then it's uh, heralded by somebody who I don't feel is very talented uh, with as the world champion. And I think if you could move, uh, say, an EC3 or – my actual personal pick would be uh, Chris Adonis into that world title role and maybe move EC3 out of the national title. I think Jordan Clearwater would make a great national champion. I think he'd be perfect as national champion. Um, with that being said, if, if Tom Latimer was not a TV champion and he was vying for the world heavyweight championship, I think Clearwater would fit well as a TV champion as he already was one for a while. Um, and <laughs> Mike says, trade Mims and take Pope. I would love to see the Pope back in the NWA. I don't know that. uh, I mean, you're going to have to throw me uh, like a first round draft pick too for that one. And it's not to, it's not to beat down on Mims. It's just, I don't feel like the NWA has done much to elevate Mims uh, since his feud with the television title, right? Like uh, the feud that he had with, Tyrus, who's your world, he's your world champion now. And they've done nothing to build Mims up into that. They put him in a tag team with Dak Draper. Draper himself had a pretty good run towards the national title that uh, just didn't quite materialize. But then I feel like they've been squandering both men's talents as a tag team. I I can't wait till that duo is broken up and we get to see more uh, something else from the NWA, from those two. Uh, Willie Bowen brings up Brett Michaels, Big Swole, Justin Cole, but who would you trade them for? The idea, uh, Willie, is you're going to have to get value, right? And, and we're talking about getting value for Memphis. I mean, who's going to carry the Memphis brand if you take out uh, Brett Michaels and Big Swole? Um, Steve G also brings up, I take Mike Anthony with the right push. Anthony could carry the NWA the way Aldis did. I mean, that's, wow, that's 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 some heavy praise, Steve. I, I don't think... I don't think anyone could carry the NWA that Aldis did. That isn't already moved on to bigger and better. But I think there are some people who could help carry the brand uh, moving forward. That's for sure. Uh, Lamb says, Jeremy, with the answer of the day. Yeah, I mean, the Clearwater, like, Clearwater in Hollywood is the most, one of the top heels for the company. The crowd loves to hate them. He's had a lot of success. He's a former heritage champion and a former world champion. Um, I could see him easily becoming, uh, you know, a heritage champion again or a TV champion. I don't feel like it would change things much for Clearwater uh, if he doesn't get another run with the world title in the United Wrestling Network. While he was world champion, I mean, he beat guys like Frankie Kazarian. Uh, he beat uh, Chris Adonis. I mean, it wasn't like he just beat nobody's. He he wrestled some very uh, credible competition. Um, Mike says, after Crockett Cup, we should be seeing Mims and Draper at uh, Wits with one another and on TV. And yeah, I mean, at this point, like, why would I, if, if I'm 
if I'm Mims, why am I teaming with a guy that seemingly is not taking me where I want to be? And vice versa, if I'm Dak Draper, like what's where where's the benefit? Yeah, I've been teaming with you, Mims. And before I was teaming with you, I was in pursuit of the national title. I've been teaming with you, and we haven't done squat. We got close once. Steve says Tyrus isn't going to elevate anyone. He can't even go in the ring. I don't blame. Him. Uh, that's true. There, that's not even. It's not even a point of contention. It's fact. Lamb wants to remind everyone, and this is a good get from Memphis. What's one of the best things that uh, Dustin and Maria Starr do in Memphis is the fact that they're able to bring in these larger-than-life characters to their little territory. And I get it. Lance Archer isn't a free agent. He's under contract with AEW, but he has the ability to work these dates. And every time he comes in, like they're going to draw some attention. Lance Archer is a freaking beast, man. He's a former NWA national champion in his own right. He's a two-time NWA world tag team champion with Chris uh, Cash. Oops, lost the focus there. With, uh, with uh, Kid Cash, excuse me. And also with uh, uh, Harry Smith. Um, gosh, I he there's your trade. I want I want the NWA to bring in Lance Hart, uh, Lance Archer, Lance Hoyt, whatever you want to call him. Uh, I think he would be a great addition to the roster. Uh, Willie says a Tyrus can't elevate a fork full of food. I mean, that's maybe the only thing he can elevate at this point, and maybe his leg while his knee is recovering. Uh, Steve says, "Lamb, some you talk about a wrestler not used right. It's Lance Archer. Archer." I mean, I, I will say this, at least on the New Japan side, at least they gave him the opportunity to win the uh, New Japan U.S. Championship. And even if it was just a, uh, even if it was just a uh, transitional title change, the fact that he was able to win the title in AEW, at least they gave him that. Uh, but you know, you're right. I, I feel like the uh, NWA would benefit far greater from a guy like Lance Hoyt, Lance Archer, than AEW has used him in any light. Um, Mike says, well, two-day and NWA replay day, Silas versus EC3. It's been a while now, no fresh NWA content. Again, paid 40, so almost every important match has been seen for free. Yeah, look, I, I, I could talk about that till I'm blue in the face. Um, you know, I don't want to automatically just come down on the NWA because at least they're putting out content and some people haven't seen it yet. You know, there's people in this chat who didn't order the pay-per-view. Um, I think if this was my show, if I'm doing an, a USA themed show, I think I would have pulled out the footage from the national champions. You know, uh, you've got you, you, I, at the very least, I believe they own the footage of Willie Mack defending that national championship. At, uh, you know, he defended it at the Crockett Cup against Colt Cabana. I would have pulled that match out of the vault. I would have pulled out uh, the national title match, uh, you know, of maybe, maybe Scion beating, uh, Scion beating, uh, Jack Stane for that title belt. Uh, or, or maybe even, uh, Trevor Murdoch winning the title. From Aaron Stevens. I mean, there there's matches that they could have just pulled out of the vault and said, you know, on the 4th of July, we're going to celebrate our nation by celebrating our national championship. Here's some matches that best demonstrate our national championship. And here's some of the champions of our past, present, future. I mean, Aaron Stevens had to defend that title on, uh, on, on power, right? Like, let me look. Look, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to take this minute live. To look up that national title and how many times it was defended uh, in the NWA over the last few years. Excuse me, it's going to take a second. Uh, but, you know, Trevor Murdoch had that title. He took it to South Wrestling, uh, Southwest Entertainment, uh, SWE Fury. Um, you know, there, there was a lot of opportunities for that title. But so, let's see. So the first person to bring that title back in the Lightning One era was Willie Mack. Willie Mack had a 188-day reign as champion. 
He won it during the uh, the seventieth anniversary show by lastly defeating Sam Shaw. He took that title on the road with the uh, in Philadelphia, where he defended against Shane Strickland at the House of Hardcore. That was also on the line, the Twitch television title. He defended the title again against Sam Shaw in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. He defended against Matt Cross, which would have been a good match to show at the NWA pop up on New Year's uh, the New Year's Clash. He defended. He defeated Rhett Titus. Now, that footage is not available because it's a Ring of Honor uh, match, so kind of have to pass that one. Uh, he defeated Josh Alexander. Again, we don't have footage of that one because it was out of the NWA. Uh, and then lost to Colt Cabana at the Crockett Cup 2019. So there was at least two matches that they would have access to um, that would have been fun to see again for the first time. Some of the some of the viewers watching Power right now never saw Willie Mack in the NWA. Uh, you know, Then you could have James Storm defeating Colt Cabana. Oh, actually, no, that was the Ring of Honor. Nope, you can't have that. Uh, you could have Colt Cabana and James... Oh, I guess you can't have... Uh, talking too fast. You could have Colt Cabana defeating Willie Mack for the title. That's one match that you could do. The rest of them were Ring of Honor matches. Uh, you could have um, James Storm uh, losing the title to Colt Cabana. That was on an episode of Power. You know, they definitely own that match outright. Um, Aaron Stevens defeating Colt Cabana and Ricky Starks. I mean, what a great match to use. That was at Into the Fire. Like, I know that they own that footage. That that was shot in the Georgia Public Broadcasting Studio. That would have been something unique that we haven't seen in a while. Um, and then you could take it a step further. Scott Steiner wrestling against Aaron Stevens for that title. That would have been a great match to put on tonight. Because, again, Scott Steiner, you put his face on the camera. I was like, oh, wow, Scott Steiner? I know some people will say, hey, that guy's washed up, but he's a superstar in the business. Uh, you could have the Aaron Stevens versus Trevor Murdoch, that uh, the 10-minute time limit draw for the title back on power back in 2020. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you could exactly use the primetime live footage where Murdoch defeats Stevens, but that would have been something you could have used potentially. Uh you know, Murdoch versus Adonis at the pay-per-view back for the attack. That would have been fun to see. Uh, we won't talk about Chris Adonis' first run as champion. Uh, you know, we could have you could have replayed Adonis versus Judeus at hard times too. You could have had uh, uh, Adonis versus James Storm at the 73rd. Any of these would have been fun to watch. That would have had that, uh, you know, the ce celebrating the United States. Mayweather defeating Jack Stane, Jack Stane defeating uh, Mayweather, uh, Mayweather defeating Chris Adonis. Any of those matches you could have pulled out. Uh, maybe not Jack Stane versus Eric Jackson, but maybe Jack Stane versus Marche Rocket. Um, again, I just feel like uh, these are some missed opportunities. Scion versus Homicide. You know, uh, maybe not Scion versus Joe Alonzo because it feels like they've already kind of ran that back recently. Uh, but you could have had any one of those matches instead of one that was just from the pay-per-view. I think that I feel like that might've been a bit too soon. Uh, let's see some more of the comments. Uh, wrestling with MMA says national championship in the U S tag team uh, title footage. Yeah. I mean, look, you have a lot of fixers and a lot of uh, country gentlemen. I'm, not necessarily in need of more fixers. Like I, I kind of want them to, and, and, and the NWA is kind of doing that, which I think is good. They kind of been pushing them to the back a little bit so that uh, they can breathe and maybe they can find a new life in them. I know at the, uh, the uh, fundraiser event that they'll be doing this Saturday, July 8th, I know that, uh, you know, Jay Bradley won't be wrestling as a fixer, but is actually challenging for that national championship against EC3. Um, or no, am I getting it wrong? Maybe it's the TV title. I don't have a graphic, so I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Willie says the trade he wants to make is through Billy and EC3 for Gun Show, Brett Michaels, and Big Swole, Justin Cole. I will say this, man. If you put through Billy in Memphis, you are printing money. 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 Through Billy would, would kill. Kill in Memphis. Um. Lamb said EC3 will go to Devotion Championship Wrestling with the NWA national title, and he has the title also at Ohio Valley, which I think is great. I, I, yes, to both of those. Um, 
Mike says, I could be wrong, but in the three years, we've had maybe four different champs, I think. Uh, for the national title, I mean, I kind of just went over them. But uh, so since the title has been created um, or re rebranded, I guess you could say, you had Willie Mack, Cabana, Storm, Stevens, Murdoch, Adonis, uh, Mayweather, Dane, Scion, and EC3. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10 different men have held that title. And a lot of those matches were filmed in early parts of power. So the excuse of maybe that footage is owned by Ring of Honor because of the co-promoted pay-per-view events, that doesn't hold up here. Uh, the footage may be owned by United Wrestling Network. Okay, that doesn't hold up here because there's plenty of matches from power that they could have used. And then, you know, by this time next year, you could have focused on the uh, U.S. tag team titles because at that point, the titles will be over two years old and you have plenty of footage between, you know, whoever beats... Uh, the country gentlemen and and uh, the fixers. You'll have plenty of matches from that. So, I mean, that's that's a long term plan right there. Just solved it for you. Uh, Steve G says, any Eli Drake on power? Yeah, of course there is. Of course there is. Um, and it's, I will look it up again because that's the kind of guy I am. I can't let things go. Um, let me see here. Um, Eli Drake, LA Knight. And I mean, if you could, that would be a great time to kind of showcase matches from from Eli Drake. I'm not saying that. Uh, look, I'm not necessarily saying that it's going to pop the ratings, but you know, there's there's rumors that uh, Eli Drake is supposed to be stepping away from the WWE. I mean, they kind of build it up at the uh, uh, the night after the pay per view that he was maybe stepping away. But you know, you had uh, Eli Drake uh, versus Jordan Cruz as part of NWA Shockwave. That was a dark match that never officially aired on uh, United Wrestling Network. You had Eli Drake and James Storm as tag team champions taking on the Bouncers. Eli Drake and Storm uh, versus Josephus and Mims. Uh, Drake, Storm, and Murdoch versus Aaron Stevens. <laughs> oh, I, oh, never mind. That was a dark match. Never mind. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, uh, the Dawsons versus Eli Drake and Tim Storm. Eli Drake versus Caleb Conley. Eli Drake versus Mr. Anderson a couple times. Uh, Eli Drake and James Storm versus Colt Cabana and Ken Anderson. I mean, he was on there a lot. There's plenty of footage of him in his promos. And, I mean, you kind of you post that, and maybe people think, oh, maybe maybe L.A. Knight's coming. Uh, who knows? So, uh, <laughs> Lamb says you can never go wrong with Steiner math. I mean, look. Steiner was, is a, was a draw. I don't know if he still is today, but I think if you throw his name on a poster, somebody's going to pay attention. Um, Lamb says, or maybe how they introduced the national title back in 2019 and used some of the original content they shot for the Willie Mac series they wanted there. I don't think they have foot. I don't think they own that footage. You know what, Lamb? I think a lot of that footage uh, is still in the possession of David Lagana. And that's just me guessing. No one's ever told me that. But that's what I would do. And I think that's what James H. Jackson would do. There's there's stuff from the first season that people haven't seen. Look, I know a lot of you guys are NWA diehards now, but but were you here when we had you know the uh 10 pounds of gold series? Were you were you there when uh you know uh we had some of these matches on power the first season. Not everybody who's watching today was watching back then. And not everyone who was watching back then is watching today. I feel like there's opportunity to, uh, you know, if you're going to go in the vault, go into the, some of the older stuff, give us some stuff we haven't seen in a while. Did you know like Mims was uh, Mims was in one of the first matches on power? Like, why not show me that? And I could see where his, uh, where he's grown as a competitor or he's grown as a wrestler, you know? <laughs> would he come back though that's the thing lamb i don't think he would remember you got to remember when the nwa let me take a drink away. when the nwa came back sorry when the nwa came back to t or uh to our collective consciousness with tim stormer's world champion you know Tim never seemed to have a chip on his shoulder, but uh, you know who did? Uh, Nick Aldis. You know who did? 
uh, Billy Corgan. You know who did? Dave Lagana. And I, I, I consider myself a friend of Dave Lagana. You know, I don't think I'm getting invited to his housewarming party or anything, but uh, uh, as someone who has spoken to Lagana quite a bit over the years, um, and I've known him for a long time, not just since he started working with the NWA, but back when he was working with Championship Wrestling from Hollywood back in the days, um, I don't think he has any desire to work for Billy Corgan again. And he's somebody who, I'm going to be honest, man, he's kind of, He's a kind of already set. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Dave Lagana used to write for a little TV show called Friends. And I <laughs> I think Friends is on so much that I think he gets a paycheck even to this day in royalties. I think that dude's still getting paid for what he did on Friends, let alone any other project he's worked on that had some sort of royalties. He was a writer in Hollywood. And again, I'm not saying like, oh, we need him back. Maybe he would benefit the NWA, but why would he come back with the way that they treated him? You know, sometimes it's better to walk away uh, and, and leave them wanting more than, than to stick around and get abused by the, the people who uh, you're supposed to be working for. Lamb, you didn't know that Dave Logano was a writer for Friends? All right, here we go. IMDB.com. That's our one of my favorite websites and I type in the name David Lagana. Uh, uh, oh, I don't think that's him. That's not him. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, David Lagana. What's going on here? This isn't what I was looking for. Sorry, sometimes the IMDb site is a little difficult to navigate. But uh, I assure you, he was a writer for Friends. David Lagana, uh, producer for Ring of Honor from 2009 to 2016. Let's see. Is <laughs> known for Ring of Honor, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, and NWA Power. But they don't have his other credits? Huh. That's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but yes, he did write for the uh, Friends. Uh, I think he told me once that he had one episode that was mostly his. But uh, because I had not to sound, not to name drop, not that your boy J. Cal is all Hollywood, but uh, I do have other friends that work in the industry. And uh, one of my friends, um, you could look up his name. Adair Cole uh, actually sits on a lot of in a lot of writing rooms where you help develop storylines for TV shows to, for projects, and you get paid for your time there. And then, of course, if your ideas are incorporated into the episode, uh, you're you get credited as a writer or co-writer for the script, and then you get royalties based on that. I mean, I mean, that's I'm sure it's a lot more technical than that, that I'm, that I'm kind of expressing, but, um, yeah. So if you've written anything in Hollywood, uh, of any like actual, actual content, you know, stuff that like you know, a show like friends, like, man, you turn on the, your TV almost anywhere in the country and you can find an episode of friends. Uh, that show is so big that if you've written for that show, you're still receiving high royalties. Um, Tim says, you got to Google Dave Lagana Friends. Uh, Jeremy says, yeah, he wrote one episode of Friends in 2000. James, that's the new nickname, right? Uh, Jay, Hollywood Cal. You're damn right, baby. I have an IMDb page. Lamb says, do people also know that you appeared on a NWA 10 Pounds of Gold episode? I actually was... Uh, on a couple episodes of the 10 pounds of gold because of China and stuff like that. I was hanging around a lot uh, when they first appeared, but they actually got me to do a talking head segment uh, when, uh, when, when flip was challenging uh, Cody or challenging flip was challenging Nick all for the 10 pounds of gold. And it was the whole, I think the episode was called flip before Cody. And, uh, and I compared flip Gordon to, to laser Tron. Um, Raluca our, our dear friend, Raluca, who is on the mend, I'm glad to see you uh, out, wrote the episode where Ross meets Bruce Willis when he dates that much younger girl season six. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> no comment. Let's see, the Reluchador is here to inform you of all things friends. Um, Mandy's in the house. What's up, Mandy? How you doing? Uh, Terry's in the house. Uh, Mandy says a lot of the wrestlers were not happy with Logano behind the scenes. You know, and, and, and Mandy, I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not in the locker room, so I can't speak to that. I cannot. But also part of the detriment of the NWA early on is that it was really four or five people, right? Because Billy Corgan was still your mastermind, your, 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 your producer, your president, whatever you want to call him. Dave Lagana was pretty much in charge of everything else. Dave Marquez helped produce some of the segments that they were doing, but it was all really Lagana. And then Nick Aldis, of course, was part of it. Tim Storm was part of it. Josephus was part of it. Uh, I felt it was different. You, you made the wrong decision by trying to put Lagana in terms of running your company and being in charge of your creative and uh, in charge of your sal- like your employees. Like I think there should have been a delineation. He was spending way too many hats. And I don't think that's a way to be successful. As somebody who owns my own business, if I don't delegate my responsibilities to somebody else and I'm and I'm doing everything by myself, then I'll never be successful. I need to delegate what I can do to myself and then what I can't do to find somebody who can. I don't like talking to customers, so I try to avoid it, although that's my like 90% of my job. Uh, I also don't like calling to collect money from customers. So I hired somebody to do that because I don't want to spend my day all on the phone trying to collect money from uh, invoices that are owed from customers. So like, likewise, the NWA, had they been with a better action plan, you should have still had Pat Kenny. Pat Kenny could have been your head of talent relations and you could have had Dave Lagana stick to production, producing these segments and being involved with creative. I feel like that was a better place for them to be. That would have been a better opportunity for uh, for the NWA, I think, in the long term. To find his friend's credit, you have to look under David J. Lagana. Lamb says a lot of wrestlers are also happy with their NWA paycheck, despite their booking is questionable. Yeah, I mean, like, look, uh, we've heard Matt Cardona say how happy he was working in the NWA. And I feel like, if anything, the NWA devalued Matt Cardona. You know, sorry, Reluchador, but um, I, just what he was able to bring to the table initially uh, diminished very quickly. And then towards the end, he's he's losing to Rolando. Like, I get, like, that's a great way to write him off your television and, and maybe to give Rolando some buzz, but wouldn't it have been a lot more uh, – beneficial to the nwa if he was putting over dak draper maybe if he's putting over mims i mean come on you're you're it's it's laughable guys what are you doing you're using someone like cardona he's on his way out cool don't put him in the ring with freaking rolando put him in the ring with somebody that's gonna benefit from that right maybe he had that feud instead of with tyrus or or with rolando what if he had that feud with uh with with Tom Latimer, right? Latimer, you could have built up Latimer. You could have built up a lot of guys. You could have built up Jordan Clearwater. No, no, they did something ridiculous. So he he got off the hook. Really, he put over Rolando in a few comedy spots, but I I feel like that hurt his shine. I wouldn't want at this point. I wouldn't want Cardona back in the NWA. What's he going to bring to the table? I mean, he has to almost entirely reinvent himself to make it interesting because everything else I've seen. If you watch Game Changer Wrestling, you're seeing everything he has to offer. I don't know. That maybe that's just a bad opinion. Maybe it's just my opinion. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't ever need to see Matt Cardona in an NWA ring again. Uh, the Reluchador says Matt Cardona was a lot of show, a lot of angst, and a lot of talk. That was a shtick, in my opinion. I can't think of a mem- memorable match that I thought he was amazing in. Yeah. Uh, Terry McDermott also agrees. I can see Mims beating uh, Cardona, but not Rolando. And I really feel like that's one of the things that hurt the value of the NWA. Like, yeah, Look, you brought in Cardona, and I, he wasn't cheap. He'll tell you how, like, he's not a cheap wrestler to book. 
And Lamb says, and Bully Ray versus Cardona already happened at Battleground promotion a lot. So this feud is out the window. Yeah. And they started to build towards that too. And I thought, this is stupid. And and I'm scared to death that they might bring it back for the 75th. And I'm like, why? That's not what the chase needs. If you bring Cardona back, it better be to put over Dak Draper. It better be to put over Silas Mason. It better be to put over one of these younger talents that could benefit from that push, right? I mean, hell, he didn't even put over Knox on the way out. I mean, I guess he kind of did, but not really. Not really. Not in a meaningful way. Knox's value has been multiplied when you put him in the ring with Trevor Murdoch as a tag team. So I, I don't know. I don't need... I don't need uh, Cardona back in the NWA unless, you know, we're going to get a commitment out of him that's going to help elevate somebody younger, somebody worthwhile, somebody that's going to help grow the business. <laughs> James says it's why Cardona, excuse me, that's why Cardona doesn't go back to the WWE because he's making bank on the Indies. Yeah. And look, I, I get if going to the United Kingdom and doing Matt Cardona in the UK could get over quick. I mean, it got over quick in the NWA too. Don't don't get me wrong. He definitely has value to the right promotion, but I think the NWA squandered any value he had for them. If you put Matt Cardona in the United Wrestling Network, you know, uh, it could be interesting. Short term, nothing long term for sure. But, you know, Cardona goes to Australia uh, as part of the uh, World Series of Wrestling Tour. I mean, that's a I think that's a great get. I think that's a good move. Uh, but just uh, putting him in the WWE, excuse me, in the NWA or, you know, any of these promotions that we talk about on this podcast, I think it's beneficial only short term and only to put over some of the younger guys. Uh, so tonight's power, like we mentioned, it's um, it's more or less paying homage to uh, the U.S. title, the national title, um, U.S. tag titles, excuse me. So the matches we're getting for tonight, um, I believe, uh, I wish I had these up on the screen. I guess I could. Uh, I actually do like this match, and I don't remember this one, so it'll be interesting to see it. Um, I'm going to bring these up here real quick. Give me just a second. I know I could do this while I'm talking. I could. I can multitask. Why can't I multitask? I'm good at multitasking. Um, so for tonight... We have, uh, of course, this match is most fresh, just in our mind, Silas Mason versus Thrillbilly that we had from the uh, the uh, 312 pay-per-view. No, from Crockett Cup, excuse me. Uh, the other match that we have, I believe this is from the anniversary show, um, Kylan King, oh, original air date, November 12th. Okay, that's nice. They told us the original air date. Uh, November 12th, King versus Camille versus Chelsea Green. <laughs> again, you know how we talked about Eli Drake or Scott Steiner, like King and, and Green have moved on to bigger and better. Both of them, you know, both of them are no longer in the NWA, uh, but that was still a good match for our women's world champion. It kind of just reinforces that. But again, I would have left out the, the women's title for this show. I would have just focused on the national championship and the U S tag championships, or like I said earlier, just the uh, national championship. But uh, then we also have, Chris Adonis defending against uh, JTG. I don't remember this match. I honestly, I don't remember this match at all. Um, now you got me. I need to look it up because I don't remember. When, when did this happen? It said it aired uh, July 6, 2021. Yeah, that's almost a year ago. Well, it is a year ago, basically. Uh, so that should be a fun match. And then, of course, we'll see uh, the Fixers versus Country Gentlemen for the U.S. tag titles. Um, again, all this has been seen before. All of it has aired either on YouTube or pay-per-view. But I think, again, I, I, I don't dislike what they were efforting here. You know, I, I don't I don't have a problem with it because I, I feel like, look, some content's better than no content. Content I've already seen repackaged, repurposed could still be entertaining. Uh, like I said, I don't even remember this match taking place, so I'm kind of excited to see it again. Um, and like I said, I, if this would have been me, I would have went a little bit deeper into the vault and pulled out some matches that we haven't seen. Guys like, uh, you know, you could have had a Josephus match, or you could have had uh, a question mark match, or you could have had a... Uh, uh, 
I almost said Zicky Dice, Ricky Starks match. You could, there's lots of ways they could have gone with that. Um, Elam says Adonis first run was in 2021. Yeah, well, you got to remember, right? So when the NWA came back from their hiatus, um, when they came back from the the pandemic plague, uh, you know, that first show back was in 2021. I think it was like in March or April or something like that. And then they started slowly building up, you know, first the shows with no audience, then limited audience, and then now they're back to running shows with a full crowd. Uh, but that Adonis run was so atrocious. In that first run, it was awful. Like, he didn't have a lot of positive uh, momentum in that first year as as uh, world as national champion. Um, the second run was a lot better, but even not by much. So, but yeah, going back to that, um, Adonis, you know, I don't think that's even listed on a, a cage match, which, you know, cage match is, is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Um, matches. Speaking of uh, Adonis, he just spent the last month uh, did a, a, a four day tour of uh, Manitoba, Canada. They were in Nipawa, Mordern, Winnipeg, and Soros. Um, for so, if you're thinking of a guy who could potentially become the next world champion, I mean, uh, yeah, he it was a superpower episode. So, uh, oh, that was okay. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you tonight, but I know what that match was now. Um, yeah, and Lamb says you could have added some comment. There's so much stuff they could have done that they didn't do, and that's what I think is the most atrocious of all of it. Um, and Tony says Chris became champion at the worst era of Lightning One, and that's there's some truth to that, too. By the way, uh, there's a lot of truth to that, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, man, I think, um, I, I think that the NWA. We, I mean, we're marching towards the 75th anniversary. Um, you know, we're planning the alliance as a family, as a community. We are the alliance, the hashtag that I, I use in a lot of our posts. We're trying to be there in St. Louis, and I hope you guys are making your plans to be there. You know, I don't expect Dodie to come. I don't expect Lamb to be there. But if, uh, if it's not international uh, travel for you, it'd be awesome to see a lot of the hashtag NWA fam in St. Louis uh, for the pay-per-views. I do believe it's going to be at the chase again. I don't think that's been officially confirmed via the, uh, the press release or anything like that, but I'm so excited because of the chase's historical significance for pro wrestling. I have been able to see pro wrestling at the, uh, at the Mecca of pro wrestling here on, in Southern California at the uh, grand Olympic auditorium. I was able to see, pro wrestling in the Mecca of Mexico city. I got to see wrestling at the arena, Mexico, also the uh, uh, arena Coliso in Mexico. Both of them are, are sacred grounds for Lucha Libre fans. And so it's a, uh, it's a great deal, a great honor, something I'm very much looking forward to, to being able to see wrestling at the chase, I guess, you know, outside of going to Japan, uh, you know, Madison square garden should be on my list. Uh, I don't think this, I'm pretty sure the sportatorium is gone. So that's kind of not going to happen. And uh, of course, uh, uh, like I said, the, uh, the, the chase is, is a, a very special place. And then also the, the 2300 uh, uh, ECW arena in Philadelphia. I actually got to go there when I was in uh, Philadelphia uh, earlier this year, but there was no wrestling going on. And Tony says, all I remember or sunsets. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful, right? I mean, they're beautiful sunsets. To the uh, not Tijuana nights, but uh, Mexico City nights. Um, real quick, Willie says, "Does any wrestler, Doty, any wrestler better than Tyrus having the ten pounds of gold?" Absolutely. Uh, Steve says, "Jay, you saw wrestling at the Olympic Auditorium." I. <laughs> Not in the heyday, right? I didn't get to see the old, uh, the old true NWA Hollywood, but I did see ECW. Um, their only California show was at the um, Olympic Auditorium. I did get to see that, and I was very thankful to see it. Later, I would also see XPW uh, run at the Grand Olympic Auditorium, and uh, you know that was kind of uh, not the best. 
but I got to see some cool wrestling that night as well. Some of it anyways. Um, man, I should look up that show one of these days to see who was on it. You know what? We got a few minutes. You guys can go if you want. I'm going to just uh, fart around here for a minute. Uh, let's see. XPW. Gosh, it must. It was like 2002. 2002. Let's see. Uh, events. Oh, man. What was it? Uh, My Bloody Valentine. Nope. Uh, not Go Funk Yourself. That would have been cool if I had saw that one. Uh, free Fall. I think it was Free Fall. Let's see. Uh, Vinny, Ma- Vinny Massaro versus Scott Snot. Yeah. Psychosis versus Evan Courageous. Yeah. Uh, D, who I think was Dynamite D, versus Pogo the Clown. Not good. Uh, Chaos. Joey Chaos defeating Angel and Chris Hamrick and Osawa uh, for the XPW television gauntlet match. That was a good one. Um, Juventud Guerrera versus Mosco de la Merced. I don't even know who that is. Oh, X Fly. Okay. Uh, that was a fun one. Uh, Johnny Webb versus GQ Money. Not really. And that wasn't anything great. The Sandman versus Supreme. I don't remember that match, to be quite honest. But New Jack versus Vic Grimes. New Jack nearly killed Vic Grimes. Um, so, yeah, that was the uh, last XPW event I saw there. And then, uh, let's see. When did ECW run the Grand Olympic? I think that was in like 2000. Uh, maybe it's 99. Let's go 99. Uh, nope. Let's try that again. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I wish I was better at this, but I'm not, so. Let's see. Uh, Sandman ECW. Uh, ECW Heat Wave 2000. Rhino defeats Sandman. Let's see what other matches were there that night. Well, that's loading. I'm going to read some more comments. Uh... Jody says, of course, Willie, we have EC3, Tom Silas. Can Billy persuade the church so he can hold wrestling at the old auditorium? Same with former, uh, you know, I don't think you can get into the, the Grand Olympic Auditorium at this point. I think it's just a, it's a done deal. I don't think it's going to happen. I would love for it to happen, but it's, I don't think so. Uh, the XPW show that I went, excuse me, the ECW show that I went to, uh, Sal E. Graz, Graziano versus Balls Mahoney. Danny Doring, Kid Cash, and Roadkill versus C.W. Anderson, Simon Diamond, and Johnny Swinger. Jerry Lynn defeating Steve Corino. Chris Chetty and Supernova defeat the Baldies. Tajiri defeats Little Guido, Mickey Whipwreck, and Psychosis. Rhino defeats the Sandman. RVD defeats Scotty Anton. And Just Incredible defeats Tommy Dreamer to uh, retain the World Heavyweight Championship. And then uh, if anyone was at that show, you know that the XPW locker room, uh, uh, the ECW locker room emptied out on the uh, XPW street team at that show. Uh, Balls Mahoney. So, yeah, there's my uh, Grand Olympic Auditorium history. I don't think the uh, anybody can persuade uh, that church to allow wrestling back in that venue. They did do a few wrestling shows there post uh, the ECW post XPW, but I, I don't foresee that happening again, but, uh, thanks guys. I do appreciate you being here. We did go a little bit long. Um, I do want to remind you guys that the one year anniversary of the other Alliance guys, it's been a year. I can't believe it, man. Uh, those guys are holding it down. Timmy, uh, Scooby, Jeremy, they're all holding it down with the other Alliance guys. Check them out tomorrow. There's going to be a lot more United Wrestling Network talk. I'm sure they're going to have some things to say about today's USA episode. Uh, and I expect I expect that, uh, you know, some fantasy booking with Dave Scooby and, of course, some reflection in the past year, probably re, uh, wondering why they made the decision to uh, jump on this sinking ship. But uh, I do appreciate you guys being a part of this podcast each and every Tuesday. Uh, again, Wednesdays with the other Alliance guys. And then, of course, Thursdays, the Alliance guys podcast. Uh, and hopefully maybe some more stuff soon. But until then, guys, 
Uh, you're always great and appreciated, and we'll see you at the matches. Thanks for checking out the pre-party, a presentation of alliance-wrestling.com. You should hit that subscribe button and join our community. I also want to remind you that we recap NWA Power every Thursday at 8 p.m. in the live stream. We try to stay social, so find us at the Alliance blog. And until next time, we are...